um, Yusuf, like mentioned, Yusuf, I'm running the digital platform uh, at Finner. I will introduce that in a, in a bit later, and I'll talk today a bit about how we how we also how we develop uh, kind of digital customer experience in an airline setting, and how we kind of coordinate with the rest of the company. Uh, so, kind of to topics for today, we'll do a one slide introduction into Finner so that people get a bit of a context. There is an elephant in the room, so I'll address that, and then we'll get on with the topic of the day and how we are building the customer experience. I'll talk a bit about our future plans as well, but of course, timelines of those might be somewhat uh, challenged by as of today. Uh, Finnair is a 97-year-old airline a flagship carrier for Finland. Uh, our business is really built on connecting Asia and Europe, and as you can see from the map here, so we are really uh, we have been really built the backbone of our business on flying people uh, from Europe to Asia and, and vice versa. Of course, we do have some operate some routes to North America as well, but it uh, really the core and the growth drivers are, are the Europe, Europe to Asia routes. As you can see from the map there, so it's kind of a geographical uh, advantage of being uh, having our main hub and our only hub Helsinki so north so the shortest distance from many European capitals uh, to North Asia or even Central Asia uh, say Beijing Shanghai Tokyo these places it goes actually above Helsinki so we have a very good uh, business advantage there last year we flew 15 million passengers and we have roughly 6,000 employees uh, we're operating and fleet of 94 aircraft but yeah, let's uh, address the elephant in the room. I would say I will just do one slide about this so you can understand where today facing the and the whole aviation industry is today facing the biggest crisis since World War II uh, because of the coronavirus. So we started seeing this happening already a few months ago. Many of you probably have, uh, if you've worked uh, in Europe, you've kind of seen it gradually edging towards you guys. But for us, it's really started with uh, with uh, us. Like I said, we're we're one of the biggest carriers to Europe uh, from China. So we grounded our fleet already in January, and then that's kind of had a, already quite a big impact for us. Of course, we kind of started rolling those uh, kind of required changes at that time, um, and and you kind of kind of were already expecting that this might hit a bit of a larger area as well, but. But uh, to be honest, uh, it was only when we saw that Europe and when we cancelled Milan uh, some time ago, this is March uh, 3rd, so it's, it's only two weeks ago, uh, but the scale of that then started hitting us fairly hard. And as of, as of uh, yesterday, sorry, uh, we announced that we are grounding 90% of our fleet. For an airline, that is a huge... Uh, uh, huge situation. We are actually just operating few few routes that are out there, and and like I said, uh, a lot of the airline airlines out there are facing bankruptcy. So we are we're in a dire spot. That being said, uh, we, Finnair is, uh, has gone through turbulent times before. We have a strong uh, owner. We should be going getting through this. But you might you might understand that it, it is a bit of a bit of a shock to the system but we'll we'll manage through it and i'll explain when we get to our uh, roadmaps and stuff like that that these are to be taken with a slight caveat but then to the topic of today how we're building the customer experience at finnair so um, when i talk about finnair digital platform i mean um, our customer facing touch points so from uh, left to right you'll see uh, the finnair app, which is on the left-hand side. We do have an iOS or iWatch app as well. Then we have our in-flight entertainment system, uh, the big screen on board the aircraft. And we do have a Wi-Fi portal, which is related to that. We, are, we have Finner.com, of course, both mobile and, and, or, uh, and, and built for desktops as well. And then we have our Aurinko Matkat brands on the right-hand side. So Aurinko Matkat, for those who are not Familiar is a package tour operator, uh, mainly here in the Finnish market. Roughly 3 million uniques per month uh, on our properties and uh, to 300,000 uh, unique uh, app uh, downloads, 30 day active. So that's going to be the scale we're talking about. We kind of uh, already developed a few years ago a 
strategy on looking at these touch points as a platform. Every, every piece has, has kind of their own role. And this is what I'm going to be talking about, how we see different digital touch points, how we develop them, how we take uh, this development to the rest of the company so that we are aligned. Uh, because in, the, because in, a, in an industry like ours, we're not a pure digital player, although we're second largest e-commerce uh, operation in Finland uh, with 600 million euros last year, uh, turnover that we reported for our direct channel, so our uh, e-commerce operation. Uh, we still are there only to support our physical service of carrying people from A to B. And that's how, how we're kind of seeing it from the platform point of view. So finner.com, our website, is there to give you your best deal. We have, of course, servicing elements there as well, but it's there also to sell you flights. Finner mobile app is there to be your travel, uh, world-class travel companion. So that once you're traveling, you have your updates, you have your uh, boarding passes with you, you can do your upgrades, you can do buy your, um, buy your ancillary is there. Naturally, we also sell flights there, but the, the main role, the main purpose for existence is world-class travel companion. Then on board the aircraft, uh, the kind of role of the two, two services, IFE and Nordic Sky, that changes because uh, they're there for entertainment, especially IFE, to see back screens on the, on the aircraft. They're there for entertainment. They're, they're there for a movie place. Um, we're actually one of the first airlines where we've developed the software for the screens ourselves together with our, some of our development partners. We've done that now for three, four years, uh, ever since A350s were launched in 2016. And, and whatever you see on, on the aircraft, uh, on the screens, is built by our teams, designed by our designers, and so forth. So it's part of our digital experience. And then, last but not least, Nordic Sky, which is the name of our Wi-Fi portal, the portal that we have on board all the Airbus aircrafts, where you can really connect uh, connect to a Wi-Fi. You'll have some content there. We launched audiobooks and so forth there a while ago. So that's the kind of the customer-facing platform that we're talking about. But as important, I would say, is the common services that you see at the bottom of the screen. So you'll have uh, elements that we're developing with the purpose of these being shared across all the touch points, these and potential future touch points. So ways to log in, uh, ways to make payments, uh, ways for us to collect customer understanding, uh, ways to, for us to do content management, CMS. So if we create an article, how do we publish that to different places? This uh, work started a few years ago. It's by no means done, but we're, that's the direction where we're heading, building more and more of these common elements that can be used across the services. Naturally, all of this takes a lot of uh, coordination, and that's what I'm going to be talking about when I go uh, further in this presentation. But a bit of history. Uh, so four years ago, 2016, uh, we started insourcing uh, a lot of our development work. Up until now, most of the development work was done by our partners. So Finner App launched 2014. We had our first website already back in 95. That wasn't an e-commerce platform, but there was a site called Worldwide Wings at that time. Uh, but it all, mainly was developed also externally. Uh, back in 2016, we decided that this is such a strategically important part of an airline and an airline service that we need to build and understand this ourselves. I'm myself running a team of seven product owners that then manage uh, a larger group of people. We have roughly 80 people uh, developing the digital services divided into these seven or actually eight scrum teams uh, that then where we have designers, uh, developers, both backend, uh, frontend developers, full stack developers. We have a few architects. Uh, we have scrum masters naturally and a few other, other sk uh, skills there. To, to manage the, all of this. So in-housing this work has been a big part of uh, the recent development. Naturally, that has developed a really different kind of culture at the company as well, and I'm going to be talking about that. So just a bit of a, to give you a bit of a flavor, what kind of teams we have. All of these are cross-functional digital development teams headed by a product owner and a scrum master, then they have a designer. Although it says design there on the top hand right uh, hand corner, that's kind of a virtual team because the designers are dotted across the team. So we have Five teams building finna.com, one team building app. Uh, in my opinion, a bit of a getting a bit of a too large of a team with 50 people in it. So we might need to think about how we do that. But iOS and Android apps are both uh, developed in that team. Uh, we have our in flight uh, entertainment connectivity team. Bit of a different kind of team because they're building the end to end experience. They're not only building the uh, 
uh, software front end that a dot com or a web 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 team or an app team would normally build at Finner or the different companies because these guys are taking care of the hardware as well. Of course, hardware comes from a vendor, but they are kind of in, in charge of making sure that the connectivity hardware, satellite connections work, making sure that the uh, hardware aboard the aircraft, Wi-Fi endpoints and all of these work, and also they're building uh, the, the screen experience, as I was talking about. We have a payments team, and we have a few other, other teams as well, such as internal applications and so forth. Let's not go into those details. The main purpose and thing I wanted to deliver today is how do you kind of plan and coordinate this kind of work with a lot of teams? Like I said, 80 people inside a company of 5,000 employees, 6,000 employees actually as of today, where we also have a lot of different kind of projects ongoing. So how do we kind of do digital development within a larger company? And also kind of kind of are thinking, how do we do uh, long-term vision versus then the very short, uh, short uh, kind of cycle and even screen specific development. I'll go into a few details so you gotta get an idea how we do it. So in the long term, we just renewed our strategy last year and part of that that work, we kind of don't wanna nail down what we wanna exactly build. You, you don't want, especially for example, you take, a, take a system shock like Corona now for an airline. We can't really tell that what is the, um, what we're gonna, what kind of features, or even 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 larger epics sets of features we're gonna build in a few years time. But we can, what we can do is that we can, through a very good design process, by talking to our customers, by talking to our employees, by understanding what we should, where, where we should be heading, is to set a few principles. And this is what we done last year. So we have a few few kind of guiding principles that we then use when we evaluate whether a feature or a epic is, is, is relevant for us to be built. Of course, there's other factors coming into it, such as money and so forth, but these should always be kept in mind because these are the ones we feel that will, will create a good customer experience in future. So personal, that kind of goes without saying, as an airline, you understand who, who is your customer. We have a lot of data on you as an end user. There are a lot of issues of how we can use that data, of course, and especially taking GDPR into account, but we should be using all the understanding of who you are, where you're traveling to, into making your experience much more personal and not offering things that you already kind of have decided that you don't need or want for this particular uh, travel, for example. Effortless, um, we kind of feel that, as I said, our main service is, we're not selling a digital service, we are supporting a physical travel service. So we want to get you to get to the A to B, from A to B as easy as possible. And for that, uh, we kind of want to be there with our digital services, but you don't, wouldn't, in the perfect world, you don't, wouldn't be needing to interact too much with us. You can interact when you need to, and we can inform you of uh, changes, irregularities, cancellations, so forth, when needed. But if all goes well, it should be quite smooth sailing. That's what we're after. Operational, that's something we've been always debating. Do we want to be in, uh, also uh, kind of going into the world of travel media? That's what we decided that that's, that's an area where we, based on what, what our customers are telling us, based on what we're seeing on our data, that's something that we, we should be developing more and we are doing, doing more as well. In control means that it kind of goes hand in hand with the effortless part that when something happens, say we need to cancel a flight or something, you feel that you're in control. You can change your flight, you, can, you, can, you know who to talk to, you can go on to reach out to. And I think a uh, few of the most important pieces coming out from this last update last year is especially these two, number five and six kind of, any digital service where it collect uh, personal identifiable information should be really cautious about these days how they treat that information, not only because of GDPR, but because of consumer trust. And we feel that we have been making product choices along the road where we have turned down some things because we don't feel that it fits in this bucket of trust. And sustainability is a kind of a very challenging topic for an airline where your core business is flying aircrafts. But it's something that we need to, as an industry, work towards really hard to make, make the whole kind of a ecosystem a more, a more sustainable and meaning the travel ecosystem. And we can do our bit in the digital experience part of that as well. So that's kind of the big term vision that we kind of want to have ingrained in our, uh, when, when our people are making product choices. So another kind of a long term vision, how we communicate it is kind of doing these two and from. This is where we see us today. This is where we're going to. I'm not going to 
go through all of these. It's going to take a bit of time. But the whole idea is to paint the picture of the path we want to take because you're doing an incremental. We launch, we do launch over 150 individual features every year. Uh, if you count in bug fixes and everything, it's going to be around three, four hundred. But, but the whole idea here is that what is the direction where we're heading to, and and this kind of opens that up, you know, uh, this view. As is this kind of a storytelling view as well. So, if you look at this kind of a long longer term vision, we're kind of trying to tell that you know we start with individual touch points. We did what I was just talking about the whole platform part. We start to integrate. The same login works for the app, same login works for Nordic Sky, same payment methods that you stored in one place will be available in other places, these kind of things. And then when you think about the next step is really about what I was talking about, that smoothness and being in control and so forth. So it's kind of a storytelling for the vision. Then when we get uh, one more slide about perhaps about the future, this is just more about how do we see different touch points playing their role uh, in different phases. This is something that of course we can, we, we probably will adjust as we go along, but that's kind of the view we had last year when we updated it. But then when we get to a much more concrete level, this is now last year's example. This is what I use then when I talk to my stakeholders, especially around the company outside of our digital development, a lot of our development projects, management, other people who need to understand where, what are you guys doing, how your timelines are looking into. In a perfect world, I wouldn't do this. I wouldn't, I wouldn't use this kind of one year view, because as you can see, we're kind of looking into three, four cycles, agile cycles per, per, uh, per view. But as we are living in a world where we're kind of trying to match an agile development organization together with the kind of a company that works rest, otherwise in a fairly waterfall kind of an approach, it's something we just need to, need to kind of do. And then there, as you can see, there's, a, there's my big red disclaimer. Uh, we only commit to things for one cycle. So everything you see beyond the ongoing cycle, like, uh, is just the plan. So, and the plans do change. They change every day. And now, of course, for example, the last, over the last month, we've changed our plans so many times. So, but anyway, that's kind of the idea that somebody mentioned earlier today that you, do, you can't be really a purist. Uh, when you're working in a large company with some pockets of agile, some pockets of waterfall, because you'll need to find a way to work in this kind of borderline situation. So of course it creates different kinds of situations for us. Then this is kind of the, then when you go to the short term, we have our, of course, our development drum beat. This is where the uh, actual development happens. This is where the actual work happens. Uh, so fairly, somebody showed already the safe model earlier today. So this is kind of an adapted model from it, not, not following regimentally, but taking the best pieces from, from different kind of models. Uh, we are now in our uh, planning cycle 11. So we've done this now for three years. We do three, uh, so we kind of do an experiment or two every time to kind of improve it gradually. But, uh, but we're kind of trying to start, starting to find our way of working. But it's, it's, it's fairly straightforward. Three month cycle, an agile planning day in the beginning, a large demo day at the end. We do also monthly demos. And then pretty much every team, there's some flexibility for the teams to choose what kind of uh, sprint model they want to run, but typically they then do their uh, one or two week sprints, depending on the team. Uh, we also have something called innovation sprint twice a year, which is uh, kind of a free time to do your own stuff, uh, but you need to pitch for it. So idea is that you pitch an idea, uh, you'll have a few more people joining your team, preferably from other teams. So you're not just using the same people you work with. Of course, you could do that as well. We see that happening, but preferably you get to know more people uh, from your own development organizations. And recently, we actually expanded that into our business units as well. So there's there's not only uh, kind of development and uh, designer people, but also the, uh, kind of a more of a business owner types joining in. A lot of good things have kind of come out of it. The whole idea is that you need to have something to demo, something clickable to demo at the end of a week. So it's not just a slide where it's been very, very, our developers like it, our, our designers like it, and we've gotten quite a interesting services out of that. Uh, also then we use a lot of these standard tools, uh, uh, Trello, Jira, heavily in use. This is the view of our ongoing kind of a, Some teams use 
Fedora to support it. And then we also ac actually have a wall of post-its, which is our main connect way to communicate at the office as well. Uh, not, I promise that I won't talk about our launches and our products too much, but if you're interested in it, we have, a, like I said, a ton of different kind of launches last year uh, that we that we pushed out. Uh, I did a kind of a recap of the main ones and you can find that in my LinkedIn profile. It, it's uh, pinned in there. So it's, it's easy, it should be easy to find kind of a recap because it's also important to make noise about the things that we launch. We, we develop a site like finder.com, it's quite iterative. Uh, well, most of the launches we do, our end users actually don't realize them before they kind of, hey, this is something new. Same goes for Finner app, for example. So all that you see here on this screen, for example, has been something that we launched during 2019. So there's a ton of different things that we are pushing out. But like I said, uh, feel free to, if you want to dig deeper, go into, go into check my LinkedIn profile and you'll find that article uh, there where we kind of did a recap of the main things. Um, I'm going to jump over this design piece, or I'm just going to talk through it very quickly. So a lot of what we're doing is starting from, a, like I said, customer experience driven. So we start from a customer point of view. We have 11 very experienced good designers uh, doing a pretty standard discover deliver model where we kind of run our design sprints, do concepting out of that. Uh, then we have our uh, discovery phase. We try to involve as much of the company as well in the discovery activities, especially when developing internal applications, which is not my team. It's another team doing that, but we've uh, used the same methodologies there. When we're developing services for pilots and uh, cabin crew and other people, we've found, noticed that when you have the actual people using the end service, they're first of all very enthusiastic doing it and you much faster into, into a great result. So a combination of a good designer, good design researcher, a few end users and a business owner, typically is a per perfect combination to get this discovery phases onwards. Uh, and a lot of launches. What I've been personally focused on, what we've been focused on a lot last year is, uh, we developed an A-B testing capability uh, for the company. So we went kind of beyond Google Optimize, where we wanted to really have a proper A-B testing capability so that we can deploy uh, a and B versions of a new, 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 new uh, feature, for example, uh, in less than an hour. It takes 20 minutes roughly for the development teams to push out, push that out now with, with our new rig. Of course, you still need to design and build the A and B variants, but the whole idea is that we want to get tens and tens of tests every month. And once we get to that level, we're ramping it up, up now. It kind of should continue. So we start with design research, you start with validation on the design side of things, develop, launch, A-B test, A-B test until the end of the world. Um, but I'm going to spend the last few minutes uh, talking a bit about what's next. So that's, this is kind of what we, like I said, we're in cycle, cycle 11 now. So we've done this now for three years. We insourced a lot of people. We built up our teams. We have a pretty good machine now building and developing these touch points and we're developing it forward forwards but of course there's things to develop and this kind of hopefully will give you some ideas what uh, kind of a larger companies dealing with e-commerce are struggling with and we kind of this is what we see today uh, so this bit of an airline specific but goes to many 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 other e-commerce consumer facing e-commerce operations as well so you'll have people working with uh sales e-commerce sales you have people uh, working with tactical marketing, SEM, uh, Facebook marketing, these kind of things, who are in charge of acquisition. So of course, then you have your product and brand marketing people. Uh, airline lingo, RMP means revenue management and pricing. So that those are the people who set the prices for the flights. So it's a pricing of your product, whatever your product is. And then we have comms and in this slide as well, digital platform development. So. We do have a pretty good day-to-day -day cooperation. We're not that big of a company where everybody's sitting in the same office in one time, two floors, but there's still different target settings. There's different budgets. There's different reporting lines, which, which doesn't lead to some, quite a lot of misalignment on, on activities. and on, on. I think the biggest thing is cadence as well, because people work in different cadences. Our digital platform development teams work, like I just described, in a very well, we work in sprint and cycles. 
uh, and, and other teams working different kind of cadences depending on their needs. So we are a bit of out of sync all the time. And that's kind of the one thing we need to do uh, better at. Uh, quite a standard thing is, of course, and somebody already mentioned that is we really want to move into a more uh, cross, uh, kind of a, I wouldn't say cross-functional, but uh, cross uh, skills, across uh, behavioral teams, where we have a where we have a combination of these skill sets in one team built around an end-to-end -end customer process, and that's what we're kind of aiming for. Having having these kind of a having these kind of a multi multifunctional teams uh, that have yes, they will have a development core, as you can see on the right hand side here, but they will have an analytics person, they will have a pricing person, they will have a marketing. Uh, and sales manager, they will have somebody leading the whole thing, and this is probably going to be very much. And and then they, everyone, as you can see on the left hand side, everyone will live within the same cadence. And this is what we're going to do, hopefully, in future. With and this is how we feel that we're going to get. We are now we need to get through this, this thing here. Uh, I do have a. I see. I might have some time for questions. So thank you for this. Uh, Take care of yourself and wash your hands and feel free to be in touch with if you have any, any questions related to this or anything else around an airline.